Hey everyone, my name is Pritam and watching Tech with Pri. Welcome to my channel and I'm back with another exciting tech video. And this is the part 2 of the ServiceNow CAD exam preparation video guys. So already in the last video, part 1, I have covered uh, 10 question answers with all of you regarding the CAD exam. So not only I have discussed the answer, but I have discussed why I'm choosing that right answer. And also in some cases I've shown you in my PDI that why this option is correct so my purpose is to make you understand each and every concept guys that's why again i'm telling i have created this service now development playlist all the topics are discussed uh, related to the exam one or two topics are missing which would be coming in this uh, month don't worry on that so what i'm trying to say is that you have to clear your concept of each and every topic okay and also in this series, this exam preparation series, uh, which would be total 90 questions. Here also by discussing the questions, I'm discussing about the topics, not in broader way, but yeah, uh, to give you the understanding why I'm choosing the right option, right? In the same way, let's do it for another 10 questions, which would be in the part two. Again, in the part three, there would be another 10 questions. Total 30 questions will be covered in part one, part two, part three. To get access from, from part four, there would be 15 questions on each part and there would be total four parts as of now. So part four, to part seven that would be only accessible for the members right so if you want to have access to of total 90 questions so please join my channel okay so let's get into it question number one which are reasons an application could be developed on the service now platform okay again this is very very important which are reasons an application could be developed on the service now platform now that I have already discussed you in the service now development playlist of course in the uh, building custom application when we understood the business requirements and stuff so we discussed that why in what cases uh, you know an application can be fit in the service now so let's see the options so it uses forms uh, extensively to interact with the data so that is true right we know in service now uh, everything is in in the form or list view each and every table so that is one of the reason definitely second it needs workflow to manage processes so any kind of process like approval uh, we use flow uh, for doing sending emails and other things as well there is a workflow uh, is definitely there number three it requires reporting capabilities so it is also true again in service now we have very powerful reporting tool that we can use it requires low level programming libraries come on that's something uh, i can't match with service now right low level programming libraries that definitely is not service now defines as and the final one is it uses multimedia features so I think we got our three answers. That would be the first three, right? Form, uh, workflow to manage process and reporting capabilities. All right, sounds good. So let's get into the question number two. What section on the notes tab shows the history of the work documented on the record? What section of the notes tab? Let's see the options and then, then I'll quickly show you uh, in my PDI. We have journal, we have activity stream, we have diary, we have timeline, okay? And also we have audit log. So let's quickly see. So if I come here, you can see and my I'm in my PDI right now. So the let me open the any of the incident. Let me open this incident. And here in the notes tab, you can see this activities, whatever you do, type something. So it's post. So regarding the history of the record, which team has been assigned, what are the work notes, everything gets stored in the activity tab. So if you click on here, activity stream, you can directly come up here. So activity stream represent these activities. So we got our answer already. So the answer would be activity stream, option B. All right. So let's move to the question number three. What function do you use to add buttons, links, and context menu items on form and list? We have UI settings, UI actions, UI policies, and UI config. So you know that to add button, links, and context menu item, we use the UI actions. All right. Let, great. Let's go to the question number four. Which of the following is true? A UI policy actions execute before UI policy script. The execution order of a UI policy script and action is determined at the runtime. A UI policy script execute before UI policy action or the UI policy actions and script execute at the same time. So always remember guys, UI policy, I mean as for service now, service now always recommend that uh, if you are doing UI policy, then try to do it without script. If you need to write a script, then go for the client script. In UI policy, scripting is not recommended by service. No, but definitely if the requirement is something you have to use, then you are you can use it, right? Regarding this question, UI policy actions always execute before the UI policy script. Number one is true, right? 
before the policy script the policy action runs so this is the first option that works okay so let's go to the question number five how is access to the application menus and modules controlled is it controlled by access controls or application rules client script or rules okay so let's see that so I'll go to any modules like for an example any application incident so this is the incident application if I click on edit application you can see application menu incident and the control the access control is done by roles okay also if I open any particular one like open incident this is a module of the incident application so if I open uh, this one which is the open display name open incident again this can be controlled with the help of roles the visibility of it right so we got our answer so right answer would be roles alright so let's go to the question number six your customer would like to create a new template to notify users who are affected by network outages at their side which module do you use to create a notification okay important one system properties email settings user preference email notifications system notification email notifications click gear notifications new so guys make sure you remember these things okay uh, many people uh, forget this thing and choose the wrong answer because at least the option B and C kind of a similar right uh, preference email notification system notification email notification so let's get into it so if I search for notifications you see I get it under the system notification okay so system notification would be the right answer so system notification email and then notifications so that's what we see I right? system notification under email we have the notifications okay so the right answer would be option C also we had another option like administration notification overview so right answer would be system notification uh, email notifications okay so let's go to the question number seven what is service now store very important one the source for service now community created developer content I don't think for creating developer content they use the service now store marketplace for free and paid certified service now applications and integrations that seems to be the correct one also see the option C which is downgradable content on service now script archive no not that alternative name for service now developer share site no so when you read the options guys make sure you are trying to eliminate the option which is which cannot be true let for an example option D alternate name name of service now developer share site so that cannot be true right so the right answer should be B marketplace for free and paid certified service now applications and integrations now you can say me Pritam there are options which are very common to each other and that is why you need to have the clear concept of it like the previous example uh, to open the notifications it was same kind of a right one is system notification where, where is preferences in that case you have to have a clear understanding all right so let's go to the question number eight which of the following is not part of the form designer not part of the again this not part of stuff is very very important guys um, again I'm telling you make sure when you're giving the exam you're careful on that form layout page header schema map field navigator so I think the answer again if you have a clear understanding on the form designing form and uh, list stuff uh, also in the development playlist I've shown you how you configure forms in the form designer okay if you have a clear understanding you know that schema map schema map is something which is not there right so schema map we used to see the table structures how each tables are connected with each other okay in the tables module uh, but not for the form design so this would be the right answer option C let's get to the question number nine which one of the following is true for a table with allow configuration application access option selected but before seeing the option let's understand what is this allow configuration where we can see that so if I open incident table so it doesn't matter list or form view so we need to go to the uh, configuration table configuration table in the application access tab you see this is the option called allow configuration if you s hover over that allow design time configurable of this table from other application scope so suppose I'm working in a different application scope suppose I'm working in a take with pre scope and I'm using the incident table or I'm extending incident table so if this option is selected so from other application scope like from take with pre I would be able to do the configuration I would be able to do the business rule the configuration changes anything I can do if this option is selected if it is not I won't be able to do any kind of changes in this incident table okay so this is very interesting one 
So let's see the option. Only the uh, in scope application scripts can create business rule for the table. Any user with applications user role can modify the application scripts. Out of scope applications can create business rule for the table. And out of the scope application can add new tables to the scoped application. So the right answer should be what we learned that they can change this stuff configuration, right? So option C, that is the out of the scope applications can create business rule from the table. So incident table, for example, it is there in the global scope. So any out of the scope application, if it is a uh, from tech with scope, they can create business rule. If this allow configuration button is checked, this is a very important one guys. Okay. So let's go to the last question of this part two. Which of the following are configured in an email notification? Who will receive? What content will it be in the notification? When to send the notification and how to send the notification? Option A, B, C and D. We have different combination of it. So let's quickly see that. Again, I'll open the notifications. Let's open anything like email assigned to in the SC task table. So we have the when to send, okay. We have the who will receive and what it will contain, but how to send notification is not there. So option D won't be right. So we have option D in B, C and D. So A would be the right answer. Okay. So this is it guys. Another 10 questions is covered. Uh, total part two is done. Now in the part three, we will have 10 more questions. So see you in the part three. Bye bye. Take care.